Welcome to Biomutant. Encode your DNA. Define your genetic structure. Encode your DNA. Define your genetic structure. Choose a genetic resilience. Choose your first style. Choose a genetic. Choose your first style. Pick your main color. Choose your detail color. Pick a class. Commando. Cyphreak. Saboteur. Sentinel. Satscom. Deadeye. Deadeye chosen. Good choice. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the dark side of you. Your inner voice, to be precise. An echo of the balance and consequence of your actions as you move. Forward. Can't believe you'd choose that thing over me. But I'll be here waiting for you when you have a change of heart. That thing? I'm right here. Let me remind you, we're two halves of the same. With the difference being I'm the better half. Better half? My way is both better and brighter. Light makes it easier to see the best end. The best end is the one you decide yourself, and it seems we're headed in the right direction. Guess left can be right sometimes. Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others.
Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the Predator only grew stronger. for it. This is not the time nor place to end this story. This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. The Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the Tree of Life started to die.
Looks like you've got this. The oil sludges everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. An emergency box from the once was. <laughs> looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Whoa! It's time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it.
buffer than ever. The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any... ...living being when absorbed, including you. Toxanol built vessels called arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc they left behind that we know other arcs travelled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Just a few moves left. Make them count. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. 
They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. Spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. Last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. Small things for your big ideas. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Muma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, 
but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Muma's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. After the old village was destroyed and you disappeared, a struggle between the families erupted and over time, the disciples turned against each other. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. He understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the potato people. The potato people, or Nono, are a wonder somehow in... You might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of ki. The Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass, he says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle. The small tree you saw up there where you met will eventually grow into a tree of life and start giving back to nature. It'll be the heart of the land. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy.
<laughs> you handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. <laughs> He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. They're hiding in the glitter grass that mostly grows deep inside damp caves, where they draw mineral from the natural rock. One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. But today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with you, <laughs> that he lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the Tree of Life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun. Records tell of the ruinous devastation the Toxanol Corporation inflicted on the land. The apocalypse sparked a re-evolution, the second coming, and our lineage. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mecton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the Merc Puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the Northwest Route. Noko has tamed the Majut and is preparing to take on the Hoof Puff at the end of the East Route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. <laughs> out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. <laughs> the road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. <laughs> He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mecton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Googlide are almost ready to ride. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. You're getting the hang of it.
quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Know that the tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. The world eaters have made their marks on our world over time. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the world eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be... He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. What's there to like about light? It hurts to look at. Not as much as it hurts to look at you. Always making this personal. And you're always trying to pretend it's not.
There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. Come, Reaper. Ato Wamawa. Out of date knows you'll make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe, and there's two nearby. To Loya, Oto Lola, Weta Gono. The Jagni tribe is likely to be your primary choice as they seek to become omnipresent and most importantly, feared. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Jagni isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Mook Bebuk. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagni's or Myriad's side. He believes the tribe Sifus, Jagni especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. Fabuge Mook Kofar. In Jagni's case, letting the World Eaters bring down the Tree of Life is part of their plan. They believe a cleansing is the only way the world can be saved. He'll be waiting for you beneath the Tree of Life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? It's a bridge. Just get over it. <laughs> Breathe deeper.
They've restroyed this area, muddied up what used to be muck, as if it wasn't bad enough before the tribe war began. That's the Jagni tribe's fort. Their friendship can be a blessing or a curse. It's up to you. You're either a part of their solution to the tribe war or part of the problem. Let's see. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. Says the Sifu gets to choose who sees the Sifu, but he'll let you give it a try. The Jagni tribe wants to become omnipresent and, most importantly, feared. They want to vanquish the tribes as the only way they can guarantee peace is through supremacy. The Sifu is determined to let the World Eaters destroy the Tree of Life as it's part of their strategy to cleanse the world and start anew. He welcomes you to the Jagni Fort and introduces himself as the tribe Sifu. The news of a cold-blooded Ronin crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 preceded you. The wall that separates them from the other side, the wasteland you came from. He guesses the time spent there just left a blank space in your memory, as empty and barren as the wasteland itself. He understands that sometimes we need to lose ourselves, to find ourselves. But he's glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. Sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He ha your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it was based on unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land and there are rivals. Says fear and hatred is the only path to domination, but you already know that. So embracing that side of you and helping them vanquish the tribes and letting the world eaters... He didn't expect that of you. You were born bad so you could do good in this world. That weak mind of yours has made you soft. He'll give you a chance to change your mind before you leave and asks you to reconsider. Otherwise, you'll be... Then so be it. He wants you to know that they'll show no mercy at the end of this war and offers you a last chance to come back and join when you realize you've picked the wrong side. Na oko, kiza, na oko onis polognost. 
and with that, he urges you to seek protection at Myriad Stone Fort before word gets out that you've chosen not. He disagrees, and the day you meet again, you'll understand why. It's time to say goodbye for now, and if it's not the kind of goodbye that lasts forever, then the next will mean the end for you. That's the Myriad Tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. Let's see. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. The Sifu's door is always open for newcomers, but he cautions you. They'll expect you to behave, or you'll have to face the consequences. The Myriad tribe act on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. They believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the World Eaters and saving the Tree of Life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante Ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. The wall that separates them from the other side? The wasteland you came from? 
He guesses the time spent there just left a blank space in your memory, as empty and barren as the wasteland itself. He's convinced you've returned for a reason, and is glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. The Sifu says sometimes one memory can make another come. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jack. The Jackney tribe may believe that Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. Even those who desire peace have been fought. You need to take the struggle to the enemy, or the enemy will bring it to you. When survival is threatened, there's no other option left but war. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wung Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. Can both? Even though you don't share their values, they hope you'll lead with mercy. The outcome of this war is up to you. Can, can, can both? Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. You were all part of the same tribe once, but without your Muma there as a guide, the disciples turned on each other and formed their own tribes. Hello. Seeing you brings back his memories of the old village. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul, and can sense you still have it in you, the will to do good. Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong, and can sometimes come to life. Passing the old village on your way to the first rival outpost might help. He can't blame you for not remembering, but he can sense the stillness of something lost.
time is lost on this place, but it evokes a tingling sensation. There's something special about it, drawing you closer. Let's see. As time passes, memories fade, and sometimes feelings change. It's not about who you were, it's about who you'll become. This story is far from over. Echoes of a long-lost past, like whispers in the wind. Here's someone who takes each day as it comes. He asks how you are today. Then he wants you to know that if you find yourself going through bad times, you should just keep going. He wonders where you've been. He hopes you've been out at the lake. He understands Wang Fu is hard. That's why your Muma only has six disciples. Doing just one thing helps you get more done in less time. He thinks you should really know how to swim by now. Why not? There's no better time to do what needs to be done than right now. He says, that wasn't too bad, was it? At least you learned that you'll drown if you don't swim. But you need practice, lots of practice. Great things usually happen to those who never stop trying. He hopes you'll be one of them. You just need more time in the surf. That's the only way you'll ever learn how to swim. You can never try too hard. Judging by your Mooma's look, it seems you forgot something. You promised you'd train with her before the sun goes down. It's time to go. You know you can't make up for lost time. You should know. Practice makes... You have to keep working on it if you want to be good at it. She'll see you at the village square. She'll be waiting for you. There will be a surprise for you at the end, too. Here's another familiar face with lots on his mind. Asks how you're feeling today. His only interest when creating is that what he comes up with is accurate. He was hoping you could help him pick up some scrap for a thing. He wonders what usefulness you found. He says he can work wonders with almost anything and ask that. Yeah. <laughs> 
You did well. He understands. It looks like she's starting to lose her patience. You know she doesn't like waiting for you. She wants to see you on the village square right away. Then you've got a good excuse. You share a responsibility to prevent hardship on nature and the environment. It's your future. She wants you to grow up and start thinking for yourself. You really need to find yourself before she's gone. It's in there, That's all she's ever asked of you, that you'll try and give it your best. You can't do more than that. It's in there, she worries about you. Sometimes you get lost in your own world, where the only thing that matters is you. They look determined. Better watch out. He asks you to stop right there and wonders where you think you're going. That makes him wonder why you were here looking for it. He wants to know who you think you are. You'll have to face pain at some point. She asks if you're hurt. What happened? If confidence is silent and insecurity is loud, she thinks you're absolutely right. The most important thing is that you're okay. It's time to focus on your training now. She said it before, Wang Fu will keep your body in good health, and that's how you keep your mind strong and clear. Is someone close to heart, doing what he does best? Seeing you always puts a smile on your Popsy's face. He wants to know how you're feeling. Training with Muma will make you feel better. It always does. He asks if you could help him too before you leave for training. He wishes that was true for your Muma too, but guiding the village into the future and teaching Wang Fu to her disciples seems more important for every day. He suggests you get going and find him gadgets and ideas for how you can upcycle some old fabrics. He's curious to see what you found. He's all for it. 
He can work wonders with pretty much for some says at least dirty hands are proof that you tried, and that counts. That you failed this time doesn't mean you can't succeed. He says it's about time. The style might be too edgy for his taste, but it looks sharp on you. Yeah. He knows she's already proud of you and everything you've achieved so far. You should take it with you, wear it to practice. He thinks you should. She'll be proud of you. He's looking... Your Mooma says it's about time you got here. Hopes you're as ready as you claim to be. She says she is eager to get started. You don't have much time left before the sun goes down. But there's enough time left for repetition and you need it. Training dummies don't hit back. Wants you to prove that with some practice first. Your Mooma says you did well today. She's so proud of you. Thanks you for being such a good student. Been working on a present for you, with the help of Gizmo and Wiz. You should go see him and find out what it is. You've deserved it. Andro? Says he's always thought so well of you, just like her. Your Mooma says she's never seen an apparatus as green as this little thing. It's wonderful. Figuring that out is half the fun. A piece of Scraptronics like this has built-in old world tech that makes it a potent communication device. It's called an automaton, and it's hardwired to your DNA. It'll follow wherever you go and see whatever you see. You're lucky to have such a fine helper with you. Your Mooma says you look tired. She's so happy you made the most of it. Rest and you'll find strength for tomorrow. Nothing could
could stop Luke and Luke from setting the world on fire. Your Moomer urges you to blaze a trail. A burnt kidling will learn to dread fire. That's just adding fuel to the flames. Give it a last burst and you'll make it. Your Muma says this is it. The time has come. He wants to destroy her. The time to fight is coming whether she's ready for it or not. Whatever happens, you need to know she loves you. And she tells you to stay back. This is her fight. It has nothing to do with you. She loves how brave you are, but she can't be worrying about you while... Here it comes. The past coming to haunt the present. Go through fire and water to make it out of here. Your Muma says you can make it if you believe in it. Where she goes, you go. Blood is thicker than water. You're in deep surf. Don't make waves. The surf goes where it wants to go. It'll take you to the shore as long as you go with the flow. Death is not to be feared by one who has lived life with a pure heart. A part of her will live on in you. The creature is hungry for more. Nothing is going to stand in its way now. If a sacrifice is made for someone else, it's not lost, but passed on to the next. Life must go on. Real sacrifice comes from love and necessity when all other options are exhausted. The ultimate test of conscience is the willingness to give up anything to save what you truly care about.
What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for your kin remains and makes you immortal in their memory. As the moment fades and is lost, the only thing that remains is loneliness. It doesn't mean you'll forget your past. It simply means you need to move on.